Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner, brought to you by the Rogers Corporation. Today's topic, an overview of 3D printable RF structures. Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, my name is John Coonrod with Rogers Corporation. I am a technical marketing manager, and today I have the pleasure of introducing a new material to you that we have released to the market recently. And this material has the capability of really allowing the RF engineer uh, much more degrees of freedom and to be able to do prototypes much quicker and develop new technology much faster. Uh, and this technology is a 3D printable RF material. So as I'm sure you're aware, 3D printing has been around a number of years and they've made a lot of advancements over the years. However, one aspect has not really advanced much that I could tell and that was the material being used for 3D printing. And as far as I know, this is the first 3D printable material that has good RF properties. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the data sheet. So before we start looking at the details of the data sheet, uh, I just want to remind everyone that we are making the material itself. We are not doing the 3D printing itself. We're working with a company that is expert with that technology. However, we're offering the, uh, the material itself. So here the data sheet shows that the dielectric constants 2.8 uh, when tested at 10 gigahertz with the IPC method mentioned here, which is basically a clamp strip line resonator. So it's testing the raw material. And then also you can see the dissipation factor is in the range of being very good at 0 0.0043 at 10 gigahertz. And the volume resistivity, surface resistivity, those values are actually really good. Those are excellent actually in the range of where um, most printed circuit board materials are at. Dielectric strength is good. Uh, decomposition temperature is a little unusual in a good sense. It's 313 degrees C, and that's well above the temperature uh, for lead-free soldering, and actually most rework processes won't see that temperature as well. So this is a pretty robust uh, material for the RF structure that's being 3D printed. Thermal conductivity is 0.3 a watt per meter K. That's about uh, on par with most of the materials in the printed circuit board industry and uh, does have a flame rating and moisture absorption of 0 0.08 is a really big deal because no matter how good your RF properties are of the material, if the moisture absorption is not good, then uh, as the circuit behaves and performs in different environments of different humidity, it can absorb or release moisture and that difference of moisture makes a difference in dielectric constant and dissipation factor. So this has a moisture absorption, as I said, a 0 0.08 and that's considered extremely good. As I've mentioned, 3D printing technology has been around for a number of years and uh, until now they have not had a material that you could 3D print a structure with good RF properties. Now let me go ahead and make a comparison between this new material that Roger is offering for 3D printed RF structures and other materials that are currently used for 3D printing. In this table of information, you can see uh, many of the materials that are used today for 3D printing, and the bottom row is the new Rogers material that is RF capable. And uh, here we're showing dielectric constant differences of these materials, and most of the materials are actually uh, about the same dielectric constant or within a reasonable range. And then the dissipation factor, that's where you really can see a big difference here. Uh, dissipation factor of most of these materials are well beyond 0.02 and our material is 0 0.0044. So the dissipation factor is a very important topic here, uh, as uh, most RF engineers would know. This is another table of information with commonly used materials for 3D printing. And again, the bottom row is the Rogers material. And uh, in this case, we're looking at moisture absorption. And as I previously stated, no matter how good the RF properties of a material are, the uh, moisture absorption is actually a very critical property. So moisture absorption, the ability for the material and the circuit to absorb moisture from the humidity of the atmosphere, that can make a big change in DK and DF, making the DK higher and the DF more lossy. So having a, a moisture absorption below 0.1 is considered excellent. Actually, some of these materials have pretty good moisture absorption. Normally I think of moisture absorption of about 0.3% or less to be pretty good. Uh, however, again, 0.1 or less, which our material uh, does have that property, that's considered excellent. There's nearly endless possibilities that the RF engineer can do with this 3D printed uh, capability. And I'd like to give you an example of some of the RF structures we've looked at. And one of them I think is pretty interesting is a Lundberg lens. And uh, on the next slide, let me show you uh, what this, uh, this structure looks like and how it performs. In the upper left picture, what you're seeing is the 3D printable Lundberg lens uh, RF structure itself. 
And uh, to the right of that is a cross-sectional view. And just because the pattern, it's really difficult to see, but the center of the structure is more dense than the outer layers. So basically, the picture to the far right is showing how this uh, is a cross-section for dielectric constant. And what it's showing is at the very center of the core, the density is higher and the dielectric constant is higher. And then as you move from the core out, the density gets less and less because there's more error than uh, the actual substrate being printed until you finally get to the outer part of this. And it's got a dielectric constant of 1.1 compared to the core of 1.92. So it's really a dielectric constant from about one to two as we go through the thicknesses of this lens. Now, this is pretty exciting technology, I think, uh, but even more so is we're working on the same technology with a higher dielectric constant. So in the future, it's very possible that we'll be able to do this same type of um, varying dielectric constant, uh, spatial varying dielectric constant with even greater differences in dielectric constant, which opens up even more possibilities. Here we're showing the Lundberg lens being tested in our anechoic chamber, and uh, that's shown on to the left, and then to the right, is the 3D radiation pattern of this lens. This lens was uh, fed by a uh, rectangular waveguide and operating around 27 to 30 gigahertz. In conclusion, what I've shown here is just an example of a pretty simple RF structure, and of course the possibilities are nearly endless. Uh, so for the RF engineer, this really gives them a lot of capabilities to now look at RF uh, concepts and have them printed very quickly and understand the concept right away and then make adjustments and do it again. So this is going to be much faster and cheaper than uh, normally building circuit boards and trying to uh, evaluate the performance and all the things that goes along with that. So we're very excited about this technology. That concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you're not already a member, join the Rogers Technical Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more Rogers Corporation informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Raj mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.